Mira stared at the human scientist in utter disbelief, his entire worldview crumbling with each word. This changes everything. Geoffrey Hunter's revolutionary method for harnessing dark energy promised to shatter the Zorgan's stranglehold on the galaxy. For generations, they had jealously guarded the secrets of dark energy extraction, using their monopoly to subjugate and exploit countless civilizations. But now this unassuming human astrophysicist threatened to upend the balance of power with a single brilliant presentation. Kaz stunned alien scientists filed out of the auditorium, murmuring in hushed tones. Mira slipped away and rushed to the nearest comm node. His fingers flew over the screen, urgently tapping out an encrypted message to his twin brother Kyle, one of Rizia's most respected physicists. Kyle, a human scientist, has discovered a new way to harness dark energy for starship propulsion. It could break the Zorgon's monopoly. This is a game-changer. The reply came swiftly. Are you absolutely certain about this, brother? I have never been more certain of anything in my life, Mira typed, his hands trembling. They agreed to discuss the matter further in person, both fully aware that their next steps could alter the course of galactic history. If the Zorgons discovered this breakthrough, they would stop at nothing to suppress it, even if it meant wiping out humanity entirely. With a final furtive glance over his shoulder, Mira hurried off to submit his resignation from the science directorate. There was no time to waste. He had to get to Earth and warn Geoffrey of the danger he now faced. The fate of humanity, and perhaps the entire galaxy, hung in the balance. Mira's hands shook as he shoved his few belongings into a worn duffel bag. He had to get to Earth and find Geoffrey before the Zorgans could silence the human scientist forever. With trembling fingers, he typed out one last encrypted message to Kyle, outlining his desperate plan to defect and help the humans harness the power of dark energy. Just as his finger hovered over the send button, his door exploded inward with a deafening blast. Mira whirled around, heart in his throat, as three heavily armed Zorgan security officers stormed into his quarters, their plasma rifles trained on his head. Mira of Rizia, you are under arrest for high treason against the Zorgan Imperium, the lead officer barked, his voice dripping with contempt. Mira's blood turned to ice in his veins. The Zorgons must have been monitoring the conference, he realized with a sinking feeling. They knew the significance of Geoffrey's discovery, and they would stop at nothing to keep their monopoly on dark energy. He raised his hand slowly, his mind racing for a way out. The Zorgans advanced, their weapons unwavering. Did you really think you could betray us and get away with it? The lead officer sneered. You'll be executed for this Rizian scum. In a flash of desperate inspiration, Mira lunged for the small sculpture on his desk, a gift from Kyle. He twisted the base and hurled it at the Zorgans, diving behind his bed as the sculpture detonated with a blinding flash and a deafening boom. The blast hurled the Zorgans against the walls, buying Mira a precious few seconds. Ears ringing, he sprang to his feet and sprinted out the door, running for his life through the winding corridors of the science station. He rounded a corner and skidded to a halt, as two more Zorgon security officers opened fire. Searing plasma bolts scorched the walls behind him as he barely managed to duck into a side passage. Heart hammering, Mira realized the Zorgons would have all the docking bays locked down already. Thinking quickly, he diverted to a little-used maintenance tunnel, hoping against hope to find an unguarded evacuation pod. He just needed to escape the station and get to his hidden shuttle. Then he could make the jump to Earth space. Assuming he could evade the Zorgon's ships and avoid being blasted to atoms first, the pounding of Zorgon boots echoing in the dimly lit maintenance tunnel grew louder as Mira sprinted, his pulse racing. Up ahead, he spotted a battered old evacuation pod, hatch hanging open. With one final desperate burst of speed, he dove through the open hatch, slamming his fist on the launch button. The pod jettisoned into space with a bone-jarring lurch, just as a torrent of plasma rifle fire erupted behind him. The pod's armoured hull pinged and clattered as bolts ricocheted off it, but held, a gamble that paid off as these old pods were built to withstand the rigours of emergency atmospheric re-entry. Gasping for breath, 
Mira plugged his personal datapad into the pod's control console, overriding the preset flight path. He aimed the tiny craft towards his cloaked shuttle, hidden behind a nearby asteroid. If he could just reach his ship, he could escape. The pod shuddered as it accelerated, and for a fleeting moment, Mira dared to feel a glimmer of relief, until a massive shadow engulfed the tiny craft. Breath catching in his throat, Mira looked up to see the menacing bulk of a Zorgan battlecruiser looming above him, weapon batteries swiveling to lock on. A deep, distorted voice crackled across the pod's comm system. Mira of Rissia, heave to and prepare to be boarded. Attempt to flee and you will be destroyed. Mira squeezed his eyes shut, drawing a shuddering breath. He couldn't afford to be captured. Not with the fate of the galaxy, the only hope of defeating the Zorgans, resting on him reaching Geoffrey Hunter. Opening his eyes, a steely glint of resolve hardened his gaze. Seizing the control stick, Mira wrenched it hard to the side, sending the pod into a dizzying spin as a torrent of laser fire ripped through space around him. He spiraled away, weaving and jinking amidst the tumbling rocks of the massive asteroid field to evade the battlecruiser's barrage. Alarms shrieked as a near miss sent the pod tumbling end over end, hull temperature spiking dangerously from the searing heat of the lasers. Mira fought with the controls, rerouting all power to maneuvering thrusters. He barely managed to kill the spin just before the craft pancaked against a large asteroid's craggy surface. Mira whipped the pod into a narrow crevasse, its hull scraping and throwing sparks as it barely squeezed between the jagged rocks on either side. He burst out the other side, where his shuttle awaited, still safely cloaked. With frantic speed, Mira docked the pod to his shuttle's airlock, not daring to breathe until he was through the umbilical and had sealed the shuttle hatch behind him. Hands shaking, he slid into the pilot's seat and powered up the shuttle's superior engines. Carefully, he eased the craft out of the asteroid field, creeping along at minimum power to avoid detection. If he could just reach open space, he could engage the shuttle's dark energy drive and escape to human space. He just needed to slip through the asteroids, unnoticed. The shuttle crept forward, Mira hardly daring to blink as he wove between the drifting rocks. The Zorgon battlecruiser loomed behind, still searching. The shuttle inched forward, the faint hum of its cloaking device the only sound breaking the tense silence of the cockpit. Mira's eyes locked on the sensor display, watching for even the slightest flicker that might betray his presence to the Zorgon ship. His heart raced, palms slick with sweat as he gripped the controls. Almost there. Suddenly a shrill alarm pierced the air. Mira's blood turned to ice. A fighter materializing out of nowhere, lasers already spitting deadly fire. The shuttle bucked and shuddered as the blast slammed into its shields. Cursing, Mira wrenched the controls, sending the craft into a wild corkscrewing dive. The fighter matched him move for move, staying glued to his tail. Laser fire rained down on the shuttle in an unrelenting barrage, alarms blaring as the shields strained under the onslaught. Mira jinked and juked, pushing the shuttle to its limits, but the Zorgon pilot was relentless. A desperate idea took shape in Mira's mind, a crazy, reckless gamble, but his only chance. Gritting his teeth, he angled the shuttle back towards the asteroid field and punched the throttle to full. The fighter followed, cannons blazing. At the last possible second, Mira killed the engines and fired the retro thrusters. The shuttle flipped end over end, now facing the oncoming fighter. Too late, the Zorgon tried to pull up. The fighter slammed into a massive asteroid and vanished in a blinding explosion. Wasting no time, Mira righted the shuttle and rocketed away from the expanding ball of debris. He watched the sensor display, holding his breath, as the craft cleared the edge of the asteroid field. With trembling fingers, he engaged the dark energy drive. The stars blurred and stretched as the shuttle leapt to faster-than-light speeds, leaving the Zorgons far behind. Mira sagged back in his seat, adrenaline slowly ebbing. He'd made it. He'd actually made it. But his mission was far from over. He still had to reach Earth, had to find Geoffrey Hunter before the Zorgons could catch up. A sudden crackle from the comm system made him jump. An incoming transmission, 
on an encrypted channel known only to one other person. Kyle. Mira stared at the viewscreen, a cold sense of dread settling in his gut as his brother's terrified face appeared. Mira! Kale's voice shook with pure abject horror. Turn back! You have no idea what you've done! The humans, they're not what we thought. They're... Static drowned out his next words. The transmission cut off abruptly, leaving Mira in stunned silence staring at a blank screen. A chill crept down his spine. What could possibly have shaken his fearless brother so badly? What dark truth about humanity had Kyle uncovered? Mira shook his head, trying to steady his breathing. He couldn't turn back now, not after everything. He had to press on to Earth, had to learn the truth for himself. No matter how terrifying it might be. Mira's shuttle emerged from faster than light speeds, the blue-green orb of Earth growing larger in the viewscreen. But as he approached, an icy chill crept through his veins. The orbital lanes, once teeming with ships and stations, lay empty. Earth hung in the void, silent and lifeless. Mira's hands flew over the controls, scanning for any sign of human activity, for any hint of what had happened here. The comm channels returned nothing but static, not even a whisper of a carrier wave. He boosted the shuttle's sensors to their limit, searching for even the faintest power signature, and then he saw it. A gaping, jagged wound marred the Earth's surface, a ragged crater centered on the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Mira stared in mute horror, his mind reeling at the sheer scale of the destruction. It looked as if some colossal entity had taken a bite out of the planet itself. As the shuttle descended, Mira saw that the wound was ancient, its edges worn smooth by time's passage. Whatever cataclysm had wrought this devastation, it had happened long ago. But what could have caused it? And where were the humans? The shuttle pierced the atmosphere, and Mira's breath caught in his throat. The vibrant greens and blues of Earth's surface had given way to dull browns and greys. The continents lay barren and lifeless, the oceans reduced to stagnant pools choked with debris. Ruined cities dotted the landscape, crumbling monuments to a civilization long gone. Mira set the shuttle down on the outskirts of what had once been a sprawling metropolis, according to the ancient maps in the ship's database. He stepped out onto the rubble-strewn streets, his heart pounding in his ears. The air was breathable, but carried a sharp, acrid tang that burned his nostrils. He picked his way through the shattered cityscape, searching for any clue, any hint of what had happened here. And then he saw it. In the center of a once grand plaza stood a towering monument of black stone, its surface carved with twisting alien glyphs that seemed to writhe before his eyes. Mira approached cautiously, a nameless dread building in his chest with every step. As he drew near, he felt a palpable aura of malevolence emanating from the stone, a pulsing darkness that threatened to engulf him. Stealing himself, he forced himself to look closer to study the glyphs. And then the visions began. Flashes of unimaginable horror assaulted his mind, vast incomprehensible abominations descending from the stars, their very presence rending the fabric of reality, terrified humans fleeing in panic, only to be consumed by living shadows, cities crumbling, continents shattering, the very earth itself torn asunder. Mira staggered back, his sanity threatening to unravel in the face of such cosmic horror. He turned to flee back to the shuttle, desperate to escape this nightmare. But it was too late. The shadows were already reaching for him, dark tendrils coiling around his limbs, his torso, his throat. As the blackness engulfed him, Mira's last coherent thought was a desperate, futile hope that he might wake to find this had all been a dream. But deep down, he knew the truth. The nightmare was only beginning. A scream dies in Mira's throat as his eyes snap open, his heart hammering against his ribcage. But instead of the eldritch horrors from his nightmarish vision, he finds himself strapped to a cold metal table in a dimly lit room. He thrashes against the restraints, panic surging through his veins, but the bonds hold fast, unyielding. As his eyes adjust to the gloom, Mira takes in his surroundings, a laboratory of sorts, 
the walls lined with strange, arcane equipment and bubbling vats filled with viscous, glowing fluids. The air is thick with the acrid stench of chemicals and decay. A figure emerges from the shadows and Mira recoils, his muscles tensing. But it's not a monster that steps into the dim light. It's a human, clad in a tattered lab coat, his face gaunt and pale. The man holds up his hands in a placating gesture, his voice raspy and strained as he speaks. Please don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. My name is Dr. Elias Stein, and I've been waiting for someone like you for a very long time. Mira stares at the human, confusion and fear warring in his mind. He swallows hard, his throat dry and raw. What happened here? Where are all the other humans? Dr. Stein's face twists in a grimace of pain and sorrow. They're gone, he whispers, his voice heavy with regret. Consumed by the darkness, just like in your visions. But it wasn't always like this. Once we were a thriving civilization, reaching for the stars, until we found something we weren't meant to find. He walks over to a dusty, antiquated computer terminal and taps a few keys. The screen flickers to life, displaying a grainy video feed. We discovered a signal, Dr. Stein explains, buried deep in the cosmic background radiation. At first, we thought it was a message from some long-lost alien civilization. We were so eager to make contact, to learn the secrets of the universe. But what we found was not enlightenment, but damnation. On the screen, Mira sees human scientists gathered around a massive pulsing machine, excitement and anticipation written on their faces. But then the machine activates, and the scientists' expressions turn to terror and agony as they are engulfed by seething, writhing shadows. Mira watches in horror as the darkness spreads, consuming everything in its path, leaving only death and ruin in its wake. Dr. Stein shuts off the video feed, his hand trembling. We were fools, he says, his voice heavy with regret. We thought we could harness the power of the singularity, but instead we unleashed something far beyond our comprehension or control. The darkness consumed us, body and soul, until only a handful of us were left, cursed with the knowledge of what we had done. Mira shakes his head, trying to make sense of it all. But what does this have to do with me, he asks, fear and confusion twisting his gut. Dr. Stein looks at him with haunted eyes. Because you, Mira of Rissia, may be our last hope. The singularity is not satisfied with just one world. It hungers for more. Even now, its tendrils are reaching out, seeking new worlds to devour. But there may be a way to stop it, if we can harness the power of the dark energy technology you discovered. Mira's eyes widen in shock. How do you know about that? Dr. Stein gives a mirthless chuckle. The singularity knows many things, Mira, it whispered your name to me in my dreams, showed me visions of your world and your people. It wants what you have, wants to use it to spread its darkness across the galaxy. But we can stop it, you and I. We can use your technology to create a weapon, a way to fight back against the singularity and banish it back to the void from whence it came. Dr. Stein leans in close, his eyes boring into Mira's. But I can't do it alone. I need your help, Mira. Together we can save not just your world, but all worlds. Will you join me? Mira swallows hard, fear and determination warring in his heart. He knows he should run, should flee this cursed place and never look back. But deep down, he knows Dr. Stein is right. The singularity must be stopped, no matter the cost. With a deep breath, Mira nods. I'll do it, he says, his voice trembling but resolute. I'll help you build your weapon, and together we will face the darkness and pray that we are strong enough to overcome it. Dr. Stein's eyes glint with a feverish light as he begins to unbuckle the restraints holding Mira to the table. Then we have no time to lose, he says, his voice urgent. The singularity grows stronger with each passing moment. We must begin our work at once. Mira sits up slowly rubbing his chafed wrists as he swings his legs over the edge of the table. His mind reels with the implications of what he's just learned, the weight of the task before them settling heavy on his shoulders. Dr. Stein is already moving, hurrying over to a cluttered workbench and rummaging through the scattered tools and components. 
He beckons Mira over, his hands trembling with a mixture of excitement and fear. Come, he says, his voice barely above a whisper. Let me show you what I've been working on. With your knowledge of dark energy, we may yet have a chance. Mira joins him at the workbench, his heart pounding in his ears as he looks down at the half-assembled device before them. It pulses with an eerie, otherworldly light, and Mira can feel the hairs on the back of his neck standing on end. Dr. Stein picks up a soldering iron, his eyes meeting Mira's with a grim intensity. Let's get to work, he says, and Mira nods, steeling himself for the monumental task ahead. As they bend over the workbench, the shadows seem to lengthen and deepen around them, as if drawn to the fledgling weapon taking shape beneath their hands. Mira can feel the weight of the darkness pressing in on them from all sides, a palpable force that threatens to consume them both. But he grits his teeth and focuses on the work, his fingers flying over the delicate components with a skill born of desperation. They have no choice but to succeed, no matter the cost. The fate of worlds hangs in the balance. Hours bleed into days as they labor over the weapon, stopping only for brief moments of fitful sleep and meager rations. Dr. Stein grows more haggard with each passing hour, his eyes burning with a manic intensity that borders on madness. Mira can feel the strain taking its toll on him as well, his muscles aching and his vision blurring from the constant work. But he pushes through the exhaustion, driven by the knowledge that failure is not an option. At last, after what feels like an eternity, the weapon is complete. It thrums with barely contained power, its surface etched with intricate runes and glyphs that seem to writhe and twist in the flickering light. Then let's end this, he says, his voice hard with determination. Let's face the singularity and send it back to the abyss. Dr. Stein's face splits into a feral grin, his eyes glinting with a desperate hope. Yes, he hisses, let's finish what we started. Let's save our worlds, or die trying. Together they turn towards the door, the weapon held high before them. Beyond the threshold the darkness waits, hungering and malevolent, but armed with their creation, forged in desperation and the unwavering will to survive, they step forward to meet it head on. The final battle has begun. Dr. Stein unbuckles the restraints, freeing Mira from the cold metal table. Mira sits up slowly, rubbing his wrists, his mind reeling with the implications of what he has just learned. The weight of the task before them settles heavy on his shoulders. They waste no time getting to work. Dr. Stein leads Mira to a cluttered workbench where a half-assembled device pulses with an eerie, otherworldly light. They pore over ancient texts and forgotten knowledge, trying to unravel the secrets of the dark energy technology. The texts are written in strange alien languages that seem to shift and change before Mira's eyes, making his head throb with the effort of deciphering them. Days turn into weeks, and weeks into months, as they toil under the constant threat of the singularity's ever-present darkness. The air in the lab grows thick and stale, the only sound the occasional sizzle of a soldering iron or the bubbling of the strange fluids in the glass vats. As they delve deeper into the arcane science, Mira begins to notice changes in Dr. Stein. The human grows more withdrawn, more obsessive, his eyes burning with a feverish intensity. He spends long hours locked away in his private study, poring over eldritch tomes bound in cracking leather and inscribed with glyphs that hurt the eyes to look upon. When Dr. Stein does emerge, there is something unsettling about his manner, a twitch at the corner of his mouth, a manic gleam in his eyes that sends shivers down Mira's spine. His words take on a strange, hypnotic cadence, as if he's reciting from a script only he can see. One night, as Mira works late in the lab, a strange guttural chanting echoes through the dusty halls. It seems to be coming from Dr. Stein's study. Curiosity and fear warring in his heart, Mira creeps to the door, the chanting growing louder with each step. With a trembling hand, he peers through the keyhole. The sight that meets his eyes makes his blood run cold. Dr. Stein stands before an altar of black stone, his arms raised in supplication, his voice rising in a language that no mortal tongue was ever meant to speak. 
The words seemed to writhe and twist in the air, taking on a physical presence, and around him seething and churning like a living thing is the darkness of the singularity, its inky tendrils reaching out to caress the doctor's face and body in a perverse embrace. Mira stumbles back from the door, his heart hammering against his ribs. The realization hits him like a physical blow. Dr. Stein has been corrupted by the singularity, seduced by its power and its promises. He knows he must act quickly before it's too late. With trembling hands, he gathers up his notes and blueprints, the fruits of their long months of labor. The weapon they have created is the only hope of stopping the singularity, even if it means sacrificing his own life in the process. But as Mira turns to leave the lab, he finds Dr. Stein standing in the doorway, blocking his path. The doctor's eyes are black and soulless, his lips twisted in a cruel smile. Going somewhere, Mira? Dr. Stein's voice is a sibilant whisper, barely human. Mira backs away, clutching the blueprints to his chest like a talisman. You're insane, he croaks, his voice trembling with fear and revulsion. The singularity has corrupted you, twisted your mind. Can't you see that? Dr. Stein chuckles, a sound like dead leaves skittering across a tomb. Corrupted? No, my dear Mira. It has enlightened me. It has shown me the true nature of the universe, the futility of resisting its inevitable embrace. And now it will show you too. He reaches out with one pale hand, and Mira feels the darkness surging forward, its icy tendrils wrapping around his mind, his soul. He tries to fight it, tries to cling to his sanity and his sense of self, but it is like trying to hold back the tide. As the darkness engulfs him, Mira hears Dr. Stein's voice, distant and mocking. Don't fight it, Mira, embrace it. Embrace the singularity and no true power. And then the darkness takes him, and Mira knows no more. Mira awakens with a gasp, his mind reeling from the twisted visions that had consumed him. He finds himself lying on a cold, hard surface, his body aching and his head throbbing. Slowly, he pushes himself up to a sitting position, blinking to clear his blurry vision. As his eyes adjust, Mira realizes that he is no longer in the laboratory, but in a strange, otherworldly landscape. Shifting shadows dance across the ground, and impossible geometries twist and warp the horizon. The air is thick and heavy, pressing down on him like a physical weight. Mira knows instinctively that this is the domain of the singularity, a place beyond the bounds of mortal understanding. Fear clutches at his heart, and for a moment he is tempted to give in to despair. But then he feels something in his hand, a weight that is at once familiar and alien. He looks down and sees the weapon, the fruit of his and Dr. Stein's labors clutched tightly in his grip. It pulses with a faint inner light, and Mira feels a flicker of hope kindling in his chest. With a surge of determination, Mira rises to his feet, ignoring the protests of his battered body. He takes a deep breath and begins to navigate the treacherous landscape, following the pull of the weapon in his hand. The weapon guides him through the shifting shadows and the whispering voices that seem to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. Mira presses on, his jaw set with grim determination, even as the landscape around him grows more and more twisted and surreal. He passes by the ruins of ancient civilizations, their once proud structures now nothing more than crumbling remnants, devoured by the insatiable hunger of the singularity. Mira shudders at the sight, but he does not falter in his steps. And then at last he sees it, a pulsing, writhing mass of darkness that seems to swallow all light and hope, the heart of the singularity itself, and standing before it, his arms outstretched in exultation, is the figure of Dr. Stein. Mira's heart clenches at the sight of his former ally, now twisted and corrupted by the power of the singularity, but he knows what he must do. With a cry of defiance that echoes across the blasted landscape, Mira raises the weapon and charges forward, pouring all of his fear and rage and determination into the attack. The weapon flares to life in his hands, 
a blinding beam of pure white light that pierces the heart of the darkness like a spear. The singularity recoils, its tendrils thrashing in agony, and for a moment Mira dares to hope that he has won. But then he hears Dr. Stein's laughter, cold and mocking, cutting through the roar of the singularity's pain. You fool, the doctor sneers, his voice distorted and inhuman. Did you really think your puny weapon could defeat the infinite majesty of the singularity? It is the ultimate truth, the final destiny of all things, and now it will consume you, just as it consumed me. Mira feels the darkness surging forward, engulfing him once more. But this time he does not fight it, instead he lets it flow into him, filling him with its power and its knowledge. He understands the true nature of the singularity, the reason for its hunger and its endless consumption. It is not a force of evil, but a force of necessity, a cosmic balancing act that maintains the equilibrium of the universe. And he understands his own role in that balance, the sacrifices that must be made to ensure the survival of all things. With a final defiant cry, Mira unleashes the full power of the weapon, pouring all of his newfound knowledge and understanding into the beam. The singularity shudders and convulses, its tendrils withering and dying under the onslaught, and then with a final, deafening roar, it implodes, collapsing in on itself in a blinding flash of light. Mira falls to his knees, his strength spent, his mind reeling with the enormity of what he has done. He knows that he has not destroyed the singularity, for such a thing is impossible, and in that moment he knows that he has found his true purpose, his reason for being. He is the guardian of the balance, the protector of all things. And he will spend the rest of his days fighting the darkness, holding back the tide of oblivion, for as long as he draws breath. Mira staggers out of the twisted realm of the singularity, his body aching and his mind reeling. He blinks in the sudden light, his eyes slowly adjusting to the sight of the ruined city around him. The black stone monument that had once loomed over the desolate streets is now nothing more than a shattered ruin, its fragments scattered across the cracked pavement. He takes a step forward, his legs trembling with exhaustion, and nearly stumbles over a chunk of rubble, but as he rights himself, he realizes that something has changed. The oppressive weight of the singularity's presence the suffocating darkness that had permeated every corner of this dead world is gone. The air is clearer, the sky a brighter shade of grey. Mira's heart leaps in his chest as he spots a shape descending from the clouds, a glint of metal catching the wan light. A ship, here, in this desolate place. For a moment he dares to hope that it might be a rescue party from his own world, that his ordeal might finally be at an end. But as the vessel draws closer, he realizes that it is unlike any ship he has ever seen. Its hull is a sleek, glossy black, its lines strange and alien. It settles to the ground with a hiss of hydraulics, and the hatch opens with a pneumatic whine. The beings that emerge are not Rizians, but something out of a nightmare. Tall and gaunt, their skin a sickly grey, their eyes black and fathomless pits. They move with an eerie, inhuman grace, their robes swirling around them like wisps of shadow. Mira of Rysia, they say, their voices echoing in his mind, cold and ancient. We have been watching you. We have seen what you have done, and we are impressed. Mira takes a step back, his hand tightening on the weapon at his side. Who are you? he demands, his voice trembling despite his efforts to keep it steady. What do you want with me? The creatures chuckle, a sound like the cracking of ice on a winter lake. We are the Ascended, they say, the ones who have passed beyond the veil of mortal understanding, who have embraced the singularity and become one with its power, and we have come to offer you a choice. Mira frowns, confusion and suspicion warring in his mind. A choice, he asks. What kind of choice? The Ascended smile, a smile that does not reach their eyes. The choice to join us, they say. To ascend to a higher plane of existence, to become one with the singularity and wield its power as your own, or to remain as you are, a mortal creature bound by the limitations of flesh and blood. 
Mira hesitates, torn between the temptation of power and the fear of losing himself. He thinks of his home, his people, the life he left behind, and he knows that he cannot abandon them, not even for the promise of godhood. I choose to remain as I am, he says, his voice steady and strong. I choose to fight the singularity, to protect the balance of the universe, for as long as I live. The ascended nod, their expressions unreadable. So be it, they say, but know this, Mira of Rissia, the singularity is not defeated, only delayed. It will return, stronger and hungrier than ever, and when it does, you will face a choice once again, to join us or to perish. With that they turn and walk back to their ship, leaving Mira alone in the ruined city. And as he watches them depart, he feels a chill run down his spine, a sense of foreboding that he cannot shake. For he knows that the Ascended are right. The singularity will return and he will have to face it once again. But for now he has a mission, a purpose. And he will not rest until the universe is safe or until he draws his final breath. He turns away from the departing ship, his gaze sweeping across the desolate cityscape. Somewhere out there, beyond the ruins and the rubble, lies the key to defeating the singularity once and for all, and he will find it, no matter the cost. Mira begins to walk, his footsteps echoing in the eerie silence. The weight of the weapon in his hand is a comfort, a reminder of the power he now wields. But as he moves deeper into the city, he can feel the hair on the back of his neck standing on end a prickling sense of unease that he can't shake. Something is watching him, he realizes, something ancient and malevolent, its gaze boring into his back like a physical weight. He whirls around, weapon at the ready, but there is nothing there, only the empty streets and the looming ruins, silent and still. But the feeling persists, growing stronger with every step he takes, and as he rounds a corner he sees it, a shadow, darker than the deepest night, slithering across the ground like a living thing. It rears up before him, taking on a vaguely humanoid shape, its eyes glowing with a sickly pulsing light. Mira raises his weapon, his finger tightening on the trigger, but before he can fire the shadow lunges forward, its inky tendrils wrapping around his legs, his torso, his throat. He chokes, gasping for air, as the creature pulls him down into its depths. And then he is falling, tumbling through a void of endless darkness, the sounds of the city fading away into nothingness. He screams, but there is no sound, no air to carry his voice. Only the cold, the emptiness, the all-consuming hunger of the singularity. But even as the darkness threatens to swallow him whole, Mira feels a flicker of something deep within him, a spark of defiance, of determination, of sheer, unbridled will. He reaches for it, grasping it with all his strength, and feels it grow, expanding outward like a supernova. The darkness recoils, hissing in pain and rage as Mira's power surges through him, a blinding light that sears the shadows and sends them scattering. He rises, his feet finding purchase on solid ground once more, the weapon in his hand pulsing with energy. He is Mira of Rissia, the guardian of the balance, the protector of all things, and he will not rest until the singularity is defeated, until the universe is safe once more. Even if it takes him a lifetime, even if it costs him everything. Mira trudges back to his ship, his feet dragging heavily through the rubble-strewn streets. The weight of his newfound knowledge and responsibility presses down on him like a physical burden, making each step an effort. He knows he can't stay on this dead earth a moment longer. He has to return home, to warn his people of the lurking threat out in the depths of space. As he approaches his ship, a flicker of movement in the shadows catches his eye. Mira whirls around, his hand dropping to the weapon at his side. A figure steps out from behind a crumbling wall, a human, watching Mira with eyes that glitter with a strange, feverish light. With a jolt of recognition, Mira realizes it's Geoffrey Hunter, the human scientist whose work first drew him to Earth. Leaving so soon, Mira? Geoffrey's voice is a mocking whisper that seems to slither through the air, and here I thought we had so much more to discuss. Mira takes a step back, his fingers tightening around his weapon. What do you want, Geoffrey? 
he demands, his voice tight with fear and suspicion. Geoffrey chuckles, a sound like dead leaves skittering across a tomb. What do I want? he repeats, his lips twisting in a cruel smile. I want what I've always wanted, Mira. Power, knowledge, the secrets of the universe, and you're going to help me get them. Before Mira can react, Geoffrey lunges forward with a sudden violent motion, his hands outstretched like claws. Mira's reflexes kick in, and he brings his weapon up, firing a blast of pure white light. The beam catches Geoffrey square in the chest, hurling him backwards into the rubble with a sickening crunch. But even as he falls, Geoffrey is laughing, a harsh grating sound that echoes through the empty streets. You fool, he gasps, blood bubbling from his lips. You think you've won? You think you've defeated the singularity? You've only delayed the inevitable. It will come for you, Mira, it will come for us all. With a final rattling breath, Geoffrey goes still, his eyes staring sightlessly at the leaden sky. Mira stands over him, his heart pounding, his mind reeling. He knows Geoffrey is right. The singularity is still out there, waiting, hungry, and he is the only one who can stop it. With a heavy heart, Mira turns and boards his ship, sealing the hatch behind him. He slumps into the pilot's seat, his hands shaking as he reaches for the controls. He sets a course for home, for Risia, knowing he will never be the same. The knowledge he's gained, the horrors he's witnessed, will haunt him forever. As the ship lifts off, rising through the layers of smog and ash that shroud the earth, Mira feels the weight of the galaxy settling on his shoulders. He is the guardian now, the protector of the balance, and he knows he will spend the rest of his days watching the stars, waiting for the day when the singularity returns and the fate of the universe hangs in the balance. He will not rest until the darkness is defeated or until he draws his final breath. But even as he makes the jump to FTL, leaving the dead earth behind, Mira can't shake the feeling that he's being watched, that somewhere out there, in the vast emptiness of space, the Ascended are waiting, biding their time, and he knows that when the final battle comes, he will have to face them once again, and make the choice that will determine the fate of all things. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.